some big fish floating underneath that mm. wants to take a bite out of you. Uh, not so much fun. Um, others, uh, Ecuador, foreign country, foreign language, foreign government. Um, what's interesting is uh, working with a school, uh, any school, and then a Christian school, there's always layers to that as well. So uh, Ashley's had layers for, man, how long have you been gone? Two years? Two and a half, yeah. Yeah, two and a half years. So I'm going to allow Ashley the thrill <laughs> of sharing with you. And uh, if she leaves a dangling participle somewhere, feel free. I'm going to give her time to uh, say, are there any questions? So if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Thank you. I um, don't know if I know what a dangling participle is, so I'll try to avoid that. Oh, okay. I, I was not a teacher at the school. I should just clarify that. Yeah, um, yeah so like uh, Pastor Wayne shared, I was in Ecuador for two and a half years. I think most of you know that. Um, I went down there, spent the first uh, six or eight months, I can't remember, <laughs> um, in the capital city, Quito, learning Spanish and living with a host family, um, kind of get a feel for the culture and just exactly what I got myself into. Um, was there about, let's see, I'm doing the math, about four months, and then COVID broke out. So just as I felt like I was getting a handle on the culture and the language and was starting to feel comfortable, then, you know, everything changed dramatically again. Um, and then in August of 2020, I moved out to the jungle and started working at the school there. Um, I have training as, as a social worker, so I was working as a counselor for the families and, and students at the school, um, which in itself is, is a very layered, um, difficult thing. Fortunately, um, this past school year, starting in August of 2021, we were able to start classes in person again. The first school year that I was working there, we were all online for the entire year due to COVID, which was it just insane. <laughs> that was a very rough year. Um, this past year was also very rough. There were a lot of changes that came with being in person that a lot of us had just hadn't expected. It was wonderful to have our students on campus, to have them in person again, but the whole COVID experience, being isolated, being quarantined for such a long time, um, had a lot of largely negative impact on growing growing minds and growing kids. Um, so we had a lot of behavioral issues when we got back to in-person classes. And um, at the height of the year, I had 30 students on my caseload that I was trying to see weekly. Um, as you may or may not imagine, that did not necessarily happen. But um, 30 that I was following very closely and then had a constant stream of kids coming in for conflict resolution, issues in, class, in the classroom. Um, so we were trying to deal with all of those issues and also help support the teachers, help support the families. Um, it was a big job this year. But um, even in spite of the challenges, uh, which for me also included a bout of COVID and parasites. Um, that's as far as I'll explain about that one, don't worry. <laughs> uh, I got the full jungle experience while I was down there. Um, fortunately, though, the Lord also provided a way for a lot of, like, the family-centered activities that the school was used to putting on and hadn't been able to do for a couple of years due to COVID. Um, at Christmas, we put on a living nativity, um, complete with live animals, and all of our students dressed as various participants in the nativity story. Um, and for the school, we actually started out with the younger kids told the story of creation first, and then the fall of man, um, and then the birth of Jesus and the good news of his death and resurrection. Um, so it was, it was an intense um, project. There was an entire weekend where all the parents came to campus and helped build the sets and the costumes and put everything together. And then for a week, um, we had several evenings where we did the same performance over and over and had... If I'm not mistaken, I believe 300 people come through and hear the story of the gospel um, over the course of that week. So that was, that was really amazing. Um, we also had what we call campeonato, which is um, basically school-wide sports competition. So all of the staff members were assigned different students as their teams and got to watch the students play soccer and basketball against each other. Um, I was assigned to the sweetest group of first and second grade girls. 
<laughs> who I absolutely adored. Um, and they actually won most of their games, which was really fun. And that had nothing to do with me. I have no idea how basketball works. I know a little bit about soccer, but not very much. So that was all on them. Um, but it was just a great time for parents to come out and support their, their kids um, and for us to try to teach sportsmanship, which worked well in some cases and not so well in other cases. But um, fortunately for me, my girls were very well behaved and very well understood how to lose or win graciously. <coughs> Um, I was the 10th grade class supervisor, which largely involves um, doing a 10 minute devotion with the students every morning. So every single day that we had classes this last school year, um, I was in the room with my 10th graders and we studied through Galatians, Ephesians, and about half of Romans before the end of the school year. Um, we also studied Galatians last year, and because these students are living in a largely Catholic um, culture, the idea of grace through faith is rather foreign because it's grace by works. And all of last year, that was the struggle in going through Galatians was getting them to understand it's not works. It's, it's just faith and grace from, from the Lord. So by the end of this year, when I asked them how salvation works, they were finally getting it is by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. And... I think they're about half of the kids, about seven or eight of them, were, were consistently getting that. And that was just very exciting to see. Um, I struggle with the concept of planting seeds I don't get to see grow into trees. Um, but that was definitely, that was a blessing from the Lord, getting to plant the seeds and then see the first little sprouts coming up. Um, and I'm very excited to hopefully to hear from other people at the school how that continues to grow in those students. Um, I also had the privilege of serving as the commissioner for the Spiritual Development Commission at the school um, this past year, so I was in charge of setting up chapel services for the students, devotions for students and staff members, as well as a day of prayer event that we did with the students. So we broke them into different groups and had them focus on different um, different areas for prayer. So the school, their families, the country of Ecuador, the world. Um, and it was, it was so much fun to see how the teachers kind of took that activity and ran with it themselves and did something a little bit different in each group and how the students all came together to pray with each other for the same thing. So that's an event that I hope this school will be able to continue um, in these coming years. Um, also had a student live with me and my roommate for about five weeks. She had a rough family situation, um, and so we were able to step in and provide a safe and hopefully, as she understood, loving home um, for five weeks. That was, that was kind of like the entire Ecuador experience for me in a microcosm. Um, definitely showed me a little bit of the depth of my own selfishness and stubbornness. Um, I think those of you who are parents know how, how kids bring that out and help you kind of work through that, hopefully. Um, so I got the crash course in about five weeks with a preteen girl. Um, it, was, it was a very good experience. I'm very grateful for it. And we were a bit sad to see her go back to her, um, her foster family. Um, so now I think most of you know I am back in the States for now. Um, I think I've talked to some people this morning. I'm not saying permanently, because the last time I said, oh, yeah, you know, I just, I don't think I would ever be a missionary. I don't think I would go overseas. God was like, want to bet? <laughs> so <laughs> um, I'm back for now, until, unless and until the Lord calls somewhere else. Um, I'm incredibly grateful for the experience. It was overall very, very positive, um, and definitely yeah, we'll be listening for what the Lord has next. And if he tells me to go somewhere else, I will let you all know. <laughs> um, I want to thank you guys so much for all of your prayers and for the financial support you've given for the last, like a lot of you have been praying for me since, since you've known me, which has been years and years, but especially the last three years um, as I was preparing for and eventually went to Ecuador as a missionary. Um, the work is not possible without people like you who support financially the missionaries that are trying to do it. And, and without your prayers, I mean, everything that we experienced this year, I know we survived and we made it through because of your prayers. And I appreciate that from the bottom of my heart. And I know I say that for myself and also for our ministry and all of the other missionaries involved. So thank you. 
Um, there's a couple of prayer requests I want to share with you. Um, our, the school went through a significant leadership transition a year ago, and now they're going through another one um, coming into this new school, new school year. So just prayers for, for wisdom, for guidance, for unity in the school and the new leadership. Um, and then this coming school year, we are adding, um, technically it's 13th grade, but it's our equivalent of, of the senior class. So the school will have its first graduating class this year, uh, which is incredibly exciting. Um, there's a lot of preparation that will need to go into that as far as the ceremony itself, getting um, diplomas, and then following those students through whether they decide to go to trade school, college, uh, an internship somewhere. Um, the school is, is really trying to come alongside them and support them in that because that's been our kind of our, one of our missions all along. Um, and then for those of you who have been supporting me individually, again, thank you. Um, and in the coming months, I will be sending some information via email. If you want to continue supporting the ministry, um, even though I won't be with them anymore, they would still love to have your support. There are other missionary families that are a part of the ministry that would that could use support. There are always students who can use a sponsor, kind of like an adopt-a-student um, kind of thing that other ministries do. Um, and we're also trying to set up a sponsorship fund um, for the counseling department so that if we have a, a student who needs a diagnostic test, needs some sort of speech therapy, um, uh, occupational therapy, mental health therapy, that there is a fund that can be offered to the family if they can't afford those things on their own. So again, I'll send out some information about that um, very soon. Anybody have any questions? Did I leave a dangling participle somewhere? <laughs> I don't know. What's a dangling participle? <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I'm not the English teacher. Thank the Lord, that's not my realm. <laughs> Was it safe over there? Uh, relatively. Um, my mom's in the back right now, so I'm going to sugarcoat a little bit of it. There was some civil unrest in my last few weeks there, which is actually why I ended up coming back to the States a couple weeks early. Um, but it was relatively safe, especially in the jungle. I didn't ever feel like that I was at risk personally. Um, I didn't have a vehicle while I was out there, so I relied on taxi transportation for everything. And never felt like I was in danger, even when I took one by myself. I would walk home along the road at night in the dark. And I think the most dangerous thing out there were the monkeys, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> did you have a uh, spiritually, what was the, what did you struggle with? Oh, uh, personally or kind of as a ministry? Either one. Okay. Whatever you feel was the hardest struggle. Um... I think for me personally, it was it was discouragement. I think that's probably a common theme for missionaries, domestic and international. Um, I really enjoy seeing the fruit of my labor and getting to see results. And um, not unfortunately, I think it's just the nature of it. But with, with counseling and with missionary work, it's a long game. And I talked, I talked with some other people about this a lot of coping with that was learning to see learning to see the ways that God is working even when it's not a big grand gesture like the miracles that we see in the Bible and we sometimes expect or hope for um, it's seeing okay this student has this difficult home situation and is not behaving well in class and is not doing well with their grades and is not getting along with other students so everything seems to be out of place and I can't fix that None of us can fix that. But in working with the student and trying to support the family and working with the teachers, eventually we can see, okay, well, they're not getting into fights anymore. Mm -hmm. So that's, the rest of this is still a struggle for them, but they're not getting into fights anymore, at least. And so I think we tended to put a goal as we're going to fix all these things. And then learning, well, actually, we can't fix any of it. We can work with them on certain places. And then seeing even this improvement, that was a miracle in itself. And that was... That was some progress. There's also, because of our location in the jungle, there's a lot of spiritual warfare. Um, we are working in communities where animism and shamanism are still very prevalent. Um, there are still very active witch doctors and other um, 
spiritual practices like that. Um, and so encountering that just in conversations with people, it, this is what they believe because this is what they've practiced and believed for generations. Um, and then there were, there were different ways that we saw that manifest too, just, just around us. Yeah, that was that was difficult too. It was something coming from America. Didn't expect to encounter. Didn't know what that would look like. Right. Well, Ashley, I don't think she's running out right away after church. So no. Uh, so thank you. Thank you. <laughs>